Uh, Bronsted Lowry definition of acids and bases. All right. Okay, so it's uh, still going to be a, a, a proton or H plus ion that we think about. All right. So, but our acid definition will change to acid is a substance. that donates an H plus ion solution. All right, so these definitions are still going to include any Arrhenius definition. So HCl, our favorite acid, um, is still an acid. Okay, it's just we think about it differently, okay? So we just have to react it with something. And so what happens in solution really is that HCl comes along and it will react with water. So what it does is it donates that H plus ion to water to form the H3O plus ion plus CO minus, so what's left over. That is called the hydronium ion. H3O plus, yes, hydronium. Okay, you can even think about it from a net ionic equation a perspective. The chloride would be uh, a spectator ion in this process. Chloride doesn't do anything. Okay, so really what's happening is H plus from the acid reacts with water, and the, what it does is, okay, here's the Lewis structure of water. The H plus ion is attracted to, it's positively charged. We know that oxygen is very polar, right? It's got a partial negative charge on it. And there's also that lone pair of electrons just sitting there, those two electrons, that would attract the H plus ion. And so that H plus ion forms a bond with that lone pair. And so now we create that H3O, if I can sneak it in there, plus polyatomic ion, hydronium. So we'll talk about that. So you're thinking of chlorine, chloride versus uh, oxygen. Well, um, the chlorine is very electronegative, but it has to do a lot with that, that bo the bond as well between that, whether that's strong or weak. We will talk about that. It just that turns out that it forms a, a bond between H, H3O plus or hydrogen and oxygen and H3O plus can be uh, more stable than the HCl bond. That is supposed to be a plus. Right, the, just the bottom of that plus didn't come through as uh, well as I'd hoped. Okay. All right, so that's the definition of Brunstad Lowry. So it's for an acid, it makes, uh, uh, donates that H plus ion. So in an aqueous solution, it's going to make hydronium instead of just H plus ions swimming around. Okay. <coughs> um, so the other thing we can call them a little bit more uh, quickly, and I know I've used this term before, but the H, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen in the atom. How many, how many uh, protons does hydrogen have? One, right? How many electrons does hydrogen have? Hydrogen atom. One, right? Just hydrogen atom. Neutral atom, one proton, one electron, okay? How many protons does the H plus ion have? One. How many electrons? None. So what is it? Basically just the proton. It's just hydrogen proton. 
Okay, no electrons, it's just a proton, and so that's why we call that. We call that a proton. So we call acids, in terms of Bronsted-Lowry definitions, we'll often call them proton donors. They donate protons in the form of H plus ions. All right, so what's the base in Bronsted Lowry definition? Okay, very similar, sort of like the uh, other side of the coin to the acid. A base is a substance that accepts H plus ions in solution, or just accepts H plus ions. H plus. It's all about H plus now. Okay, so sodium hydroxide is still a base, but it's just because of the hydroxide. All right, so you got hydroxide. It's just the, basically a net ionic equation of um, acid base reaction we talked about just now. So we got that H, OH minus, that hydroxide from sodium hydroxide once it uh, dissociates. That H plus ion can be donated from any acid to that hydroxide and that would make covalent bond and now we're back to water. So the hydroxide accepts that H plus ion. What this really helps us with uh, additionally are uh, other bases that aren't hydroxide compounds, okay? So like ammonia. Ammonia is a base. All right, but you're looking at it like uh, NH3, there's no OHs in there. How's it going to, how's it a base? Okay. Well, it actually reacts with water in water. The water's in the water. And it reacts with it. All right. And so the water is going to donate. So nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons in ammonia. And that can accept H plus ions. And when it accepts that, it makes the NH4 ammonium polyatomic ion. And then after uh, that proton is uh, goes to NH3, what's left with water? OH minus, good. That's what's left. So it still uh, follows pretty much Arrhenius' definition. This ammonia is a compound that produces hydroxide in solution. It just does it by accepting a proton from water. Uh, the base is accepting the proton, so that's another thing we can call it. We can call it proton acceptors. So the Bronsted-Lowry bases are proton acceptors. Then there are substances that can do both. There are substances out there in this crazy wild world that can accept protons and they can donate protons. What do you think they're called? Amphoteric. Good job. You've been reading ahead, haven't you? Good job. All right, yeah, so amphoteric uh, are substances that can do both. Mm hmm
substances that can donate, so act like an acid, and or accept protons. There's actually a molecule on this page that we were talking about that is amphoteric. Does anybody see it? H2O, it's H2O. If you look at here, and let me highlight this for you, uh, HCl is donating a proton to water. So what's water doing? It's accepting it right there, right there. Oh, that's so highlighted. Ammonia is accepting a proton. Who's donating it? H2O. Oh, highlighted. So water is one substance that is amphoteric. Water can act like a base and act like an acid. <coughs> it can only do one or the other. It can't do both. So it can either donate, then it's hydroxide, it's done. Or it can accept and it becomes hydronium, then it's done. Okay. There are molecules that can do both at the same time, and uh, a very important class of them uh, make up proteins. So what's the uh, building blocks of proteins? Amino acids. Okay, Amino acids are amphoteric substances, all right? Um, and they give proteins uh, a lot of their ability uh, to do the wide range of chemistry that's going on in your body, like Proteins do a lot of different things in your body, and it's mainly due to all the different types of chemistry that they can do. All right? So here's an amino acid. All right? All right, so there's 20 essential amino acids. You probably heard about them in some biology book or biology class. Uh, this is the general structure of them, okay? You got hydrogen bonded, a couple hydrogens bonded to a nitrogen. It's bonded to a carbon. That carbon is bonded to a hydrogen. And another carbon that's double bonded to an OH, or a carbonyl, that means double bonded to oxygen. And bonded to an OH group. Now, what's the one thing you got to remember about carbon when you get off, when you ship off to four bonds? So this carbon in the middle is also bonded to one more thing, okay? And that one other thing is what makes each um, amino acid different. So usually when you're just trying to, drawing the generic structure of a carb or amino acid, you just write that as R. So that's called the R group. And that could be different. It could be simple as like hydrogen, so like alanine. I think that's just hydrogen. Don't quote me on that. Or it could be something really simple like CH3, another CH3 group. Um, or it could be, you know, a big side chain with lots and lots of atoms. All right. But anyways, uh, this shows us the uh, two uh, ways that the, the amino acids can react. So um, nitrogen, right here, when nitrogen is bonded to a carbon in a uh, organic uh, in a, Nitrogen bonded to carbon in an organic molecule or biological molecule. It's called an amine. An amine. And then when carbon is double bonded to an oxygen and bonded to an OH group, so these four, three atoms, that's called a carboxylic acid. Okay? So we got an amine and we got a carboxylic acid, and that's why we call them amino acids. Okay? All right, and so the a nitrogen here, do, do, do. Uh, just like ammonia can accept protons. It can accept protons right there. So this is a base. That side, that side of the amino acid is a base, or can act like a base. And then this proton over here on the carboxylic acid, I wonder why we call it a carboxylic acid. It's an acid. 
It can be donated. We can donate this H plus ion. So that's an acid. So already amino acids can do uh, some really good chemistry. And then if you look at the different structures or if you learn about the different structures of uh, the amino acids in a biology course or biochemistry eventually, uh, you'll see that some of those side chains uh, can be acidic or basic. Some of those side chains are polar. Some of them are nonpolar. So there's a lot of different chemistry that the uh, proteins can do because of the different uh, chemistry the amino acids can do. Now what's cool about uh, amino acids and molecules like it is that they, okay, so if this accepts a proton, this nitrogen is going to have a plus charge, plus one charge, just like ammonium up here. So it would be plus one. And then if this donates a proton, it will be a minus one charge, just like chloride would be, so minus one. And it can do that at the same time. So there's scenarios where amino acids and proteins or peptides, smaller proteins, will have molecules where they have both a plus charge and a minus charge on them at the same time. So their ions have a plus charge and a minus charge. And that has one of the coolest names in chemistry, at least I think, which is fun to say. When a molecule has both a plus charge and a minus charge on its you know, structure called a zwitter ion. A zwitter ion. Zwitter. Z W like like Twitter, but zwitter. Okay, zwitter ion. And I just like saying that zwitter ion. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if that's the case, so you would draw a plus here. So if it had both in the negative, uh, usually what you would do is just draw the plus here and the minus here, and you wouldn't need brackets because overall it would be neutral. So that's how I think you show up most of the time. All right, so <clears throat> that will come back. The fact that water is amphoteric, that will come back. All right, to set up a certain scale that we'll use. Get excited. Before we uh, move on, uh, the Bronson-Lowry and Arrhenius definition are so common and really so close that they're used almost interchangeably. Even in this book, even in your book, you'll see H plus some of the time, you'll see H3O plus some of the time, okay? So basically just, if you see one or the other, that means it's uh, an acid. So just you know, know that you can use H plus, equals H3O plus, okay? You can use them interchangeably. Most of the time, uh, you know, chemistry and biochemistry, uh, uh, well, we'll use H3O plus a little bit more often, but H plus still used quite a bit in both biology and biochemistry. Uh, but you can, that's why, you can use them interchangeably. And H plus is just a little bit older. Arrhenius definition is older, so it's just kind of held on, even though... Uh, Bronze said Lowry's maybe a little bit more accurate. 